Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. As I continue with the 3 inch gecko build, I managed to find a tiny VTX with a ton of features, and I want to share it with you today. And that is the Matex Systems VTX Mini. The reason this VTX is essentially getting its own video is because this tiny thing has more features packed into it than just about any other VTX I've seen on the market. In fact, this is probably comparable to much higher end units costing maybe twice the money. Not only can it do all the basics like transmit video and use tramp telemetry for configuration, but you can also use a serial pass through in beta flight to configure the channel map. I have not seen that in pretty much anything else except really expensive high-end VTXs. And in that case, you don't even go through Betaflight, you plug them in via USB connector. So with that, I want to get over to the overhead, I want to show you the connections on this guy, and show you exactly what is special about this particular VTX. So this here is everything you get. You get a 30 millimeter adapter board, which is cool because you can take your VTX and marry it to this guy just like that. Bridging a little bit of solder between the pads on the VTX and the adapter board and have a nice permanent installation for a much larger quad. Now of course, in my situation, I'm not gonna be using the adapter board because I'm interested in the 20 by 20 stack so I can install it inside my Gecko. You also get this tiny little stinger antenna. I'm not a huge fan of these, but let's face it, uh, if you're serious about any of this, you're probably going to be using your own antenna anyway, so I don't think it really matters. I probably would have liked to see an adapter that goes maybe from MMCX to SMA, but I mean, this is what they give you. Adapters are cheap. I guess you could get one if you wanted. I'm just complaining because I'm saying it would be nice to include that in the package. In my case, I'm going to be using this Lumineer with a 90 degree, the little Daxi Mini here and I'm sure the performance of this is going to be excellent for this particular setup. So let's get all this out of the way and talk about some of the connections on here and exactly why this VTX is special. As I roll it around, this side of the board is going to have, for the most part, all of our standard connections, I'd say pretty much up until the telemetry pin right about here. So we have our voltage input. It'll accept 6 through 36 volts, so a huge range for VBAT. Powering this guy off your battery is probably going to be your best bet. We have a standard ground pad, we have a 5 volt output, and also a ground I'm assuming is to accompany this 5 volt out. We have our video input, just like we would expect from any VTX, and we also have our pad, which is for our tramp telemetry. So all this is pretty standard. As we get to the end here, we're going to start getting into some of the more advanced features. This is a Pino pen, which I hope I'm saying that right. This is going to allow you to put the VTX into pit mode via a UART or other available pad with your Betaflight flight controller. I don't think this is something I'm going to be setting up because it's not a feature I've used very often, but it's still pretty cool that it's here. Our last pad here is an audio output that'll get you sound from the onboard microphone. I've always wanted to fly with audio, but it's something that's never worked out for me. It kind of always has sounded like screaming witches and the volume is very loud and I don't need to damage my hearing, so I've kind of really never done anything with that. But the pad is here if you like to fly with audio. And those are kind of our basic connections on this side until we roll this thing around. You'll see by our antenna connector that there are four additional pads. We have a TX, an RX, a ground, and a 5 volt. These pads are literally to be able to communicate to the VTX via an available UART on your flight controller. I'm not going to be using the ground and 5 volt pads on here, but we are going to be using the TX and RX, connecting them to our flight controller to be able to access advanced configuration within the VTX. By connecting these wires, we're going to be able to use a serial pass-through and enable and disable channels that are built into the VTX in the long term, making it easy to configure the unit via the buttons. We also have a complete array of LEDs on here, which I really like because it very clearly labels and shows you what channel you're on. We have an LED here for all our common bands. We have LEDs here for all the available channels. And we also have LEDs here on the bottom, pit mode, 
all the way through 800 milliwatts. In a nutshell, that's what we're dealing with with this awesome little guy. I've got to do some wiring. I'm going to get it installed in my Gecko, and then we're going to go ahead and jump on over to Betaflight and the CLI, and I'm going to show you some of the advanced configuration in this, and that's really the part that I'm really excited about. That's why I made sure that I got a flight controller that was going to have enough available UARTs to be able to accommodate this little bugger. So without further ado, I'm going to get it installed, and I'm going to check in with you in a little while. It is now a couple days later, and I've got the Gecko assembled to the point Oh, I'd say it's probably about 90%, but we're going to be able to go ahead and move forward and I can show you the rest of the features in this VTX that I was talking about earlier. So I think we're ready to just jump on over to Betaflight and let's get this video transmitter wrapped up. Now that I'm connected in Betaflight, the first thing I want to show you is right over here on the video transmitter tab. This is only going to be consistent if you're on Betaflight 4.1 or later. Essentially, this is where you're going to set your VTX table. Now we can scroll down and as you can see, mine is already set. And I think what's valuable here is setting the value of the output in conjunction with the actual label. Now this label indicates the milliwatts that you're gonna see within your Betaflight OSD while setting the output power of the VTX. And as you can see, most of my stuff lines up here all the way till the end when the default value is 600 and my label is 800. Essentially what that means is when I go in my goggles and I change the output power on my VTX, the labels are going to be correct with the power output of that particular VTX. Of course, you can go through and set this manually, but most reputable vendors are going to start creating files and distributing them to set this up for you. Really quickly here, on Matex Systems website, if I scroll down and go to VTX table of beta flight 4.1 or later, we're going to see that there's a download here for this JSON file. Of course, there's also a command line that you can copy and paste, but if you download this file, it's just simply a click click and it will configure the VTX table for you within beta flight. I've already downloaded this file and that's how I got the configuration of my VTX. It was super quick and easy. All I did was click on this load from file. I pointed Betaflight to that file that I had previously downloaded and everything here was configured. After Betaflight imported the file, just simply click save and you're all set. I think moving forward, this is going to be a valuable feature within Betaflight. That's why I bring this up. But now let's get to what I'm really excited about with this VTX and that's being able to configure it through the CLI. In order to be able to connect to the VTX, I'm just going to simply plug in a battery to power it up. And that's really about it. We're ready to start inputting commands into the CLI. Now the first one that we're going to start with is we need to enable the serial pass-through within Betaflight. And this is the command that we're going to use in order to do that. Generic enough, we're going to start with serial pass-through, our UART number, and then the baud rate. Now what's important to note is when you do input your UART number, the number is one lower than the actual number of UART you're expecting to use. In this case, I'm using UART2, so serial pass-through is going to be UART1. Keep in mind that programmers start at 0, not at 1. So technically UART1 is really UART0, UART2 is really UART1, so on and so forth. And that's exactly why I've input serial pass-through UART1 into the command line. Once it's in there, I'm just simply going to click on connect. And now we're communicating to the VTX. While in here, we can begin with a help command. And this is going to show us all the commands that the VTX is capable of responding to. We can go with version, and it'll show you the bootloader version and the software version in the VTX. But the one that we're really after here is going to be the config list. So by typing in config list and then hitting enter, this is actually going to show us the table for the VTX. It's going to tell us how it's currently configured. So band three, channel seven, frequency, and the power output. When we look down here and we look on boss cam E, we're gonna see that there are a few channels disabled. Now the advantage to doing this configuration is if you're setting or configuring the VTX via a button push while you're out in the field, it's going to skip over all the channels that you have disabled. So if you're not using an entire frequency range, 
you can disable the entire band in one shot and just totally skip over it. Say, for example, you're only flying on race band, then maybe you're only going to have the race band channel range enabled on this VTX. With this set frequency command, I'm going to input the frequency that I want to either enable or disable, the equal sign, and of course the actual function if you want to enable or disable it. In this case, for the example, I want to enable it. My command's in, I'm going to hit enter, and we'll see that the new config is saved. Now that both are enabled, I'm going to show you the config list again, and we'll see that instead of having a value of zero here in the boss cam E, they're all enabled and they all have a frequency associated with it. Like I mentioned earlier, we can completely enable or disable an entire band, and we do it like this. The command I'm going to use is set band, then the letter of the band, and equal sign either enable or disable. What I just learned that's important is you do have to capitalize the band in order for this command to work. In my example, band E, I had to use a capital in order for it to work. Once again, I'm going to show you the config list and we can see that boss cam E is entirely disabled. Now that I'm done with the configuration, in order to exit, it's literally just a matter of unplugging the quad and that's it, we're done. Your connection to Betaflight is gonna go back to normal, so next time you plug in your flight controller, everything is gonna be the same as it always has been. Well, there you have it. There's the ins and outs of the Maytech VTX Mini. Uh, so far, so good. It seems like it's an excellent video transmitter for the money, but what it's really gonna come down to is its performance out in the field, and that's yet to be determined. However, I think you can see why I'm excited about this product, because it really does have some pretty awesome features in it that are definitely out of the ordinary. I think it's time to wrap this video up today. I'm gonna to mention that right now, Banggood has a big 1111 sale going on. Pretty much everything in the store is on sale, so if you wanna get a deal, I'm gonna leave a link below. Just click that link and it'll get you right to the details of that sale. I'll also have links to the product and all the resources that I used today to make it easy for you guys to find if this is something that you're interested in. Thanks to Hot Dog FPV, as always, just for being so awesome. But that's it. That's all I got. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.